Hi, I'm Joe, visiting from San Francisco. How do you think about the role of technological advances, especially generative AI, on more traditional industries? Thank you. Yeah, I made a mistake in calling on four, but I'll get back to two later on. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, I don't know anything about, about AI, uh, but I do, I do have... I don't, uh, that doesn't mean I deny its existence or importance or anything of the sort. And, and, and last year I said, you know, that uh, we let a genie out of the bottle when we, when we developed nuclear weapons. And that genie has been doing some terrible things lately. And the power of that genie is, would, you know, scares the hell out of me. And... Other than that, I don't know any way to get the genie back in the bottle. And AI is somewhat similar. It, it's, out, it's part way out of the bottle. And, and uh, it's enormously important, and it's going to be done by somebody. So uh, we, we may wish we'd never seen that genie or we may do wonderful things. And I'm certainly not the person that can evaluate that. And I probably wouldn't have been the person that could have evaluated it during World War II, whether we tested a 20,000 ton a bomb that we felt was absolutely necessary for the, for the United States and would actually save lives in the long run, but where we also had Edmund Teller, I think it was, it was on a parallel with Einstein in terms of saying you may, with this test, ignite the atmosphere in such a way that civilization doesn't continue. And we decided to let the genie out of the bottle, and it accomplished the immediate objective, but whether, whether it's going to change the future of society, we will find out later. Now, AI, I had one experience that does make me a little nervous, and I'll just explain it, that very, very recently, uh, fairly recently, I, uh, I, saw a, uh, an image in front of my eyes on the screen, and it was, it was me, and it was my voice, and wearing the kind of clothes I wear, and my wife or my daughter wouldn't have been able to de detect any difference, and it was delivering a message that no way came from me. So it... When you think of the potential for scamming people, if you can reproduce images that I can't even tell, that say I need money, you know, I'm, you know, it's your daughter. I've just had a had a uh, car crash. I need fifty thousand dollars wired. I mean, scamming has always been part of the American scene, uh, but. This would make me, if I was interested in investing in scamming, it's going to be the growth industry of all time, and it's enabled in a way. I, now, maybe, you know, obviously AI has potential for good things, too, but I don't know how you, based on the one I saw recently, uh, I practically would send, send money to myself over in some crazy country. <laughs> it, so... Uh, I don't have any advice on how the world handles it because I don't think we we know how to handle what we did with the nuclear uh, genie. But I do think, as someone who doesn't understand a damn thing about it, that it is it has enormous potential for good and enormous potential for harm. And I just don't know how that plays out. Good afternoon. My name is Caroline, and I'm a lawyer in San Diego. But I'm please don't hold that against me. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Munger was once an attorney, too. Right. Um, first, I'd like to sincerely thank you, Mr. Buffett, for your business integrity, tireless leadership, and generous contribution to philanthropy. My question for the distinguished panel of two is, now that the AI genie is out of the bottle as someone astutely put it earlier today, what business in Berkshire Hathaway may be most at risk with AI? Well, that's a wonderful question. Uh, 
The problem is I really don't know anything about AI, but uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, anything that's labor intensive, uh, intensive and that, uh, that uh, uh, it can create an enormous amount of leisure time. Now, what the world does with leisure time is another question. Uh, whether more leisure time, I know an awful lot of people think when they go to work at first that, the, that what they want is leisure time. And, and what I like is actually having more, more problems to solve. And, 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 uh, uh, but AI is profound. And, 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 I mean, that's what makes it it makes it a genie, you know, is, is, is what, what can happen. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, I could tell a few genie jokes, but I better not. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, but uh, I guess when we I, probably... I, I don't know what, but, uh, you know, uh, in terms of our businesses, they'll figure things out. I mean, we've got smart people, and it, it's obviously if it's used in a pro-social way, it's got terrific benefits to society. But I don't know how you make sure that that's what happens any more than I know how to be sure that when you use two two atomic bombs in World War II, that you know that you hadn't created something that could destroy the world later on. Yeah, I think when we think of AI at a lot of the business units, I mean, we're truly worn trying to think, uh, how does it make us more efficient, more effective? I mean, it, it results in more idle time, and we're probably not thinking of the iter iterative I AI where um, we're looking at very specific processes where our people can implement it and either, at times it displaces the labor, but then hopefully there's other opportunities for them within the, within the business. But I think... You know, when you think of all our businesses, I mean, we're, we're, we do have a heavy labor workforce in a lot of them, but I think we, at the stage we're at as a, as a company and, and maybe where it's at right now, it's really around how do we do things more effective, more efficiently, um, more safely if it involves dangerous processes. So it's, we're, we're early innings. <laughs> John John Maynard Keynes was, was just wonderful to read and incredible mind. But in, in around the time I was born, he uh, he wrote a book about what could happen. Uh, I don't know whether it was in the next hundred years or whatever. And and he predicted correctly that 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 output per capita would grow at this incredible rate that it has. But uh, in terms of speculating as what people would do with that. I mean, this, this guy was unbelievably smart. <laughs> and, 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 but uh, it hasn't developed exactly the way he predicted. He was right about what was going to go into the equation, but he, wasn't, he didn't have it figured out exactly what at all what, what, what uh, would be the result. So it, it is... It is really, well, we didn't know when we were developing the bomb that there would probably be, as very soon, nine countries, three of whom we should worry about plenty that will have what they have, but we didn't really have any choice. And you could have had all kinds of papers written on it and everything else, but we were going to do it anyway. We needed to do it. And if you haven't read it, it's fascinating to go to Google and read the letter by Leo Szilard and Albert Einstein to President Roosevelt written about a month before, uh, well, almost exactly a month before the, uh, Germany or Hitler moved into Poland. And it laid out, well, Leo Szilard knew what was going to happen or had a good hunch of what was going to happen in terms of nuclear bomb development. And he, he couldn't get through to Roosevelt but, he, Roosevelt, but he knew that that a letter signed by Albert Einstein would. So it's probably the most important letter ever written. And you can read it, which is just fascinating to me. Uh, but 
that started the Manhattan Project. That started, you know, it just everything flowed out of it. And like, I'll, I'll bet anything that Roosevelt didn't understand it, but he understood that Albert Einstein just <laughs> sent a letter. And, and, uh, and he probably knew what he was talking about. And, and he better get, he better start the Manhattan Project. It is, it is, it's just unbelievable what happens in this world.